Earlier this year, NXP started shipping two microcontrollers from their newer MCX line. And they ship these FRDM or Freedom Boards with those chips. NXP and the Element 14 community sent me one of each for us to check out. Hello and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James, let's get started. There are four processors in the MCX family. In this video, we are looking at the general purpose A and the more powerful N. The MCX A is a single core and can run up to 96 megahertz. It has the general purpose interfaces you'd expect in an entry level microcontroller. The MCX N is a dual core processor with security features and faster IO ports like ethernet. These chips also have a neural processing unit for accelerating AI and machine learning tasks. NXP offers both of these chips on what they call their Freedom or FRDM development board. These boards have a variety of connectivity. For example, they have NXP's FRDM header, an Arduino style shield connector, a socket for microbus, and an unpopulated PMOD port. There are two USB-C connectors. One connects to an onboard debugger and the other is a full speed connection to the microcontroller. The MCXN adds headers for a Flex IO LCD, smart DMA camera, CAN bus, an ethernet port, and on the back, an unpopulated micro SD card footprint. The board also has a temperature sensor, external flash, and a capacitive touchpad. Depending on where you buy them, these boards are in the $15 to $25 range. These processors are supported by NXP's MCU Expresso SDK. There is a standalone version, extensions for VS Code, and support for other third-party microcontroller IDEs. Personally, I like using VS Code because I use it for everything now, but I did run into a couple of issues, so let me share what I learned in case you run into these too. The VS Code extension relies on an installer for the necessary dependencies. While it works well, it will get upset if you have any of the tools it installs already available in your path. For example, I kept getting errors about the wrong CMake version being installed. If you run into this, either install the version at once, remove CMake from your path, or give its version priority in your path. I just ended up removing CMake from my path, but there was still one more path-related problem that was a little bit harder to track down. I would get two different errors, one about the CMake project name, which seems to be a generic error, and the other related to NMake not being found. That was a big clue. Turns out I had to find NMake.exe on my computer and then add that directory to my path variable. After restarting VS Code, projects started to build with no problem. Alternatively, the Eclipse-based IDE MCU Expresso is also an option. First up, I ran the Hello World program on the MCXA. It built with no issues and I flashed it with the onboard MCU Link debugger. Once it was flashed, I resumed the debugger and opened up a serial terminal to see the Hello World message. Once I validated that I could talk to the board, I moved to the hardware equivalent of Hello World, which of course is to blink an LED. There is an example in the standalone SDK repository. For the template, I filtered on Blink and then created the project. Here you can see the code used for this example. Like before, I built and then programmed the binary with the onboard debugger. And now we can see the onboard RGB LED flashing red. For the last example on that board, I loaded an i3C or i3C C example. It's the newer standard that is backward compatible with i2C. It reads the temperature from an onboard sensor. When I put my finger on it, the temperature goes up. Now, moving to the MCXN, Blink and Hello worked fine. So, I moved on to a touch example that makes use of the built-in pad. It's a pretty simple program. Touching the capacitive pad causes the onboard LED to light up, demonstrating its RGB capability, or RMB in this case. Next, I headed over to the NXP code hub, which covers more in-depth applications. For example, for the MCXN, one demonstrates the built-in real-time clock. Unfortunately, when trying to load this one in VS Code, it generates an error with instructions to use the standalone IDE. I don't fully understand what the issue is or how to fix it. It was actually super weird because the MCXN examples worked fine the day before. So something weird started to happen, but I don't have any more time to debug these software issues. Anyway, I think the more interesting example for this board would be the one related to machine learning and vision. 
it seems like a good application fit for the N processor. Unfortunately, I don't have a camera that is compatible with the board. So for now, this will bring my evaluation of these boards to a close. Overall, I would have to say the boards are good quality. I always liked onboard debuggers versus just serial interfaces. The array of connectors are useful if you have existing hardware that you want to connect. The very reasonable price points are great reasons to pick these up and consider them for your next project. Hey, thanks for watching. Check the link below for show notes on the Element 14 community. You'll find lots of great stuff over there. If you want to see more videos from me or the other host, tap or click the things on the screen. For now, it is time for me to get back to my electronics workbench.